You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Hey guys, I'm going to have a Q&A next video. Please be sure to leave a question if you want to participate. As you know from Borderlands 2, the Doll Corporation is known for producing weapons that have exceptionally low recoil, as well as weapons that burst fire. While Loke Recoil has been a staple of the Doll brand for all three of the Borderlands games so far, Doll used to make a wider variety of non-burst fire weapons. Compared to Borderlands 2, where Doll makes snipers, SMGs, pistols, and assault rifles that all burst fire, Doll used to make both revolvers and shotguns in Borderlands 1. And it's also worth mentioning that Doll weapons could either be semi-automatic, 3 to 5 round burst, and you could even get some fully automatic Doll weapons in Borderlands 1 too. Of the 12 unique doll weapons in Borderlands 1, 6 of them can occasionally spawn as hybrids where 2 different unique weapon parts appear on the same gun. This is more than any of the other manufacturers in Borderlands 1, and while the hybrids are of variable quality, it's an impressive feat nonetheless. Today, I'm going to be discussing what I think are Doll's 8 best weapons in Borderlands 1. So without further ado, these will be the top 8 best Doll guns and weapons in Borderlands 1, starting now. Number 8, Reaver's Edge. So the Reaver's Edge is a fairly decent sniper rifle that you can get from Reaver in Crom's Canyon during the Two Wrongs Make a Right side quest mission. The Reaver's Edge is best described as an above average sniper rifle and it usually comes with pretty good weapon parts. Now, the Reaver's Edge unique effect comes from the unique Reaver's Edge sight, and this sight provides improved weapon zoom when compared to most other sniper rifles while aiming down the sight, and also adds two additional bullets to the magazine. Now, to give you some idea of the Reaver's Edge unique sight and its zoom potential, uh, the Reaver's Edge sight has a zoom of 3.2, while the standard high quality sniper sights are usually either 2.4 or 2.7. So it's not quite as high as the Cyclops, but I sort of don't want it to be. I suppose it's also worth mentioning that both the Reaver's Edge sight and its unique weapon skin provide some other effects as well. The sight decreases spread while aiming down the sights, and the weapon skin provides lower recoil and decreases maximum accuracy. For that reason, you may find that you'll want to aim and shoot with this weapon as opposed to hip firing. Now, while I will discuss it a little bit more in depth later on, it's also worth mentioning that the penetrator barrel can occasionally spawn on the Reaver's Edge, turning the Reaver's Edge into a hybrid weapon. And this ultimately gives you a fully automatic sniper rifle with really good parts. Ultimately, Reaver's Edge is a fairly decent sniper rifle, and I think you're going to like it. Number 7, The Dove. So if you're familiar with Borderlands 2, there's a good chance that you know about or have even used an Infinity Pistol. Infinity Pistols combine high fire rates with an infinite magazine size, and the predecessor to the Infinity in Borderlands 2 is the Dove Repeater Pistol from Borderlands 1. Now, the Dove's special effect comes from the unique Dove Barrel for Repeater Pistols, and just like the Infinity, as you fire shots, you don't consume any ammo. Now, that said, if you have a double accessory on your Dove Pistol like I do here, you will consume ammo and will therefore have to reload your magazine. As you can see here, your ammo pool is affected. Normally, it wouldn't be. Just like Reaver's Edge, you're getting other effects from both a specific weapon part and the weapon skin. Uh, when compared to similar repeater pistols, the Dove has improved recoil, though it lacks the same damage output of the standard repeater pistol. Uh, the unique Dove weapon skin, on the other hand, provides neither the improvements or drawbacks that the standard weapon skin would for the sake of balance. Also like the Reaver's Edge, the Dove can spawn with the Hornet accessory part, and this creates the Dove-Hornet hybrid, which combines both the effects of the Hornet and the Dove together. The problem is, is that the standard Hornet will provide a superior elemental multiplier and may also possess some other superior parts as well. Uh, that said, if you want a Dove, you'll need to kill Slither during the Alter Ego Godless Monster side quest mission located in Rust Commons East. Number 6. The Raven. The Raven is an above average burst fire combat rifle in Borderlands 1. It's not necessarily the best rifle in the game, but it's going to be superior to most other combat rifles that you see, especially if they are of the burst fire variety. The Raven special effect comes from the unique Doll Raven magazine accessory which allows 5 round bursts as opposed to the standard 3 round bursts. 
Otherwise, when compared to the best standard combat rifle magazines that allow for burst fire, you're getting improved magazine size and better recoil at the cost of decreased minimum and maximum accuracy. That said, however, the accuracy stats don't seem to have really any effect on the spread or grouping of the projectiles as you fire the Raven, which are pretty tight to begin with. This is a pretty good and fairly standard burst fire combat rifle from Borderlands 1. While I prefer some of the full auto machine gun assault rifles in Borderlands 1, the 5 round burst sort of makes the Raven feel a little more like an automatic rifle. However, at the same time, I personally prefer the Hyperion Destroyer to the Raven. I think the Destroyer works a little better with Lilith's skills that allow her to have a chance not to consume ammo. If you're playing Roland, if you spec into both Overload and Assault, you can increase your magazine size dramatically and further reduce your recoil. Overall, I think the Raven is a good gun, it's just not my favorite. Number 5, the Typhoon. The Typhoon SMG is a unique weapon from Dahl that got added with the General Knox DLC for Borderlands 1. If you're curious, it drops from a shield-wielding Crimson Lance soldier named Typhoon. For those of you that are familiar with Borderlands 2, the Typhoon is sort of like a weird cross between the Seraph Stinger pistol and the Jacob's Becca, and then the Typhoon itself has also got some other weirdness going on. Uh, like the Seraph Stinger, the Typhoon's special effects come from the unique Typhoon accessory for SMGs, which allow your bullets to ricochet. After a certain distance, the initial projectile spawns two additional projectiles to deal some additional damage, sort of like the Jacob's Becca. Um, as far as stats for the Typhoon accessory itself go, um, it's identical to some of what you might see on other SMGs. The only difference is that the Typhoon has splitting bullets and it can only come as a non-elemental variant. The Typhoon is a really nice weapon to use indoors thanks to its ricochet ability. That said, if your character has skills that increase projectile speed, the distance required to get the projectiles to split increases. This is something that you'll need to be aware of on characters like Lilith. Um, at the end of the day though, this is a really nice unique SMG from Dahl in Borderlands 1. Plus I thought the weapon skin made for a good thumbnail. Number 4, the Penetrator. Now I debated whether I should include the Penetrator before or after the Reaver's Edge. Ultimately I decided I would place the Penetrator after the Reaver's Edge as the Penetrator can be one of the most powerful sniper rifles that you can get in Borderlands 1. The Penetrator's special effect comes from the unique doll Penetrator Barrel. Unlike the vast majority of sniper rifles in Borderlands 1, the Penetrator is fully automatic. In addition to automatic fire when compared to similar non-unique sniper barrels, the Penetrator has significantly improved recoil, fire rate, and magazine size. That said, the non-unique barrel that's similar to the Penetrator barrel is one of the weakest sniper rifle barrels in Borderlands 1. I would say that this isn't that bad considering the Penetrator's barrel can spawn on the Reaver's Edge sniper, which will turn the Reaver's Edge into a fully automatic sniper rifle. Uh, the Reaver's Edge combined with the Penetrator is more powerful than both the Edge and Penetrator on their own. However, it's extremely rare to see it as it barely ever drops. Even still, the Penetrator's automatic fire makes it perfect for boss fights. Since snipers are relatively accurate while scoped, you should easily be able to focus in on a crit spot and shoot whatever it is until it dies. Originally, the Penetrator was supposed to appear as a legendary weapon in Borderlands 1, however the Penetrator's rarity is glitched and has yet to have been fixed by the developers over at Gearbox. Definitely keep an eye out for the Penetrator. Number 3, the Anaconda. The Anaconda is a really nice revolver from Dahl. As you may or may not have guessed, the Anaconda's name comes from the real-world Colt Anaconda, which is a famous variant of the 44 Magnum revolver. Now, the Anaconda's special effect comes from the unique Anaconda barrel for revolvers. In general, you're getting improved accuracy along with better damage. More specifically, when compared to other similar revolver barrels, the Anaconda barrel provides twice the bonus to damage and overall better projectile spread. It should also be mentioned that while the recoil for the Anaconda is high, it's not quite as high as it is on similar revolver barrels. Like many of the other weapons on this list, the Anaconda can come with a wide variety of accessories. This allows the Anaconda to come in multiple elements, and you can even receive an Anaconda with the Masher accessory. 
If you've played Borderlands 2, the Master Accessory makes your revolver act a lot like Borderlands 2's Maggie Pistol. That said, compared to my experience with some of the other revolvers in the game, like the Chimera and the Ares, I found that I still prefer my Chimera. Uh, that's not to say that the Anaconda is a bad weapon, the problem is that it just lacks the multi-element capabilities of the Atlas Chimera. Even still, the Anaconda is a great revolver from Dahl, and if you can find one out in the wild, you should pick it up. Number 2. The Bulldog Depending on the barrel, the Bulldog can be either a strong or a very strong shotgun for players to use. As you may have guessed already, the Bulldog's special effect doesn't come from the barrel. Instead, the Bulldog's unique effects come from the unique Bulldog magazine for shotguns, which greatly improves magazine size. In addition to improving magazine size, when you compare the Bulldog magazine to similar magazines on other shotguns, you'll find that you're getting more than double the magazine size, along with superior reload speed and fire rate. Since the Bulldog can spawn with a relatively wide variety of shotgun barrels, you can occasionally get Bulldogs that shoot rockets, and you can also get a hybrid version of the Bulldog too. Now, unfortunately, the Bulldog gets paired with the TK's Wave, which is one of my least favorite shotguns in Borderlands 1. Uh, as you might guess, the TK Wave plus Bulldog Hybrid really just upgrades the TK Wave shotgun's magazine size to 20 and also gives it better fire rate and reload speed. It's really more of a cool trinket than a practical weapon. Ultimately, there's a lot of variation that you can get on the Bulldog. Uh, you may get a fairly good shotgun, possibly even a great shotgun to use, depending on what barrel appears on the gun itself. And finally, number one, the Hornet. I don't really know why, but I found that I really like the Hornet from Borderlands 1. I guess it makes a lot of sense, because the Hornet was also really good from Borderlands 2 as well. The Hornet's special effect comes from the unique Hornet accessory for repeater pistols. What this accessory does is it allows the weapon to fire two round bursts and restricts the weapon from appearing in any other element other than corrosive. When compared to other similar weapon parts, the Hornet accessory provides superior damage and fire rate at the cost of having significantly higher recoil. Now, from my experience, I haven't really noticed the recoil because of the sheer amount of corrosive damage the Hornet is capable of dealing. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, the Hornet has a hybrid variant as the Hornet accessory can appear with the Doll Dove barrel. What this does is it creates a Hornet with infinite ammo, and while this may sound great on paper, it can actually be inferior to the regular Hornet without the Dove weapon barrel. Uh, this is because the elemental multiplier on the Dove is limited to times three, while the multiplier on the regular Hornet can be as high as times four. Then again, your mileage may vary. I personally prefer the regular Hornet over the Dove Hornet Hybrid. Because Corrosive is so powerful in Borderlands 1, the Hornet is capable of wiping out both easy and difficult mobs relatively quickly, especially if you have secondary skills that allow you to trigger other damage over time effects at the same time. Overall, the Hornet is a good gun. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Uh, as far as the Q&A goes, that will be tomorrow. So that'll be the 27th of October, and it'll be a Thursday. So if you want to participate, leave a comment. Otherwise, like this video if you liked it. Take care, and I'll see you all next time.